Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name is Blue, alongside me is Teddy, the show dog, and Mr. Joe Grande. Woof, 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 woof. And you are now tuned in to the greatest cannabis show on the planet. Sit, sit, sit. lay down. Good there boy, go. good boy. You guys, there thank you, you for listening to the podcast all around the world. Check out the YouTube as Teddy is right here on the show set with us. Just sitting here and looking as pretty as can be. You got anything to say, Teddy? No. Okay, there it is. Make sure you check out our website, you guys, Cannabis Talk 101, as we have so many great articles and blogs on the site for you guys to check out. And feel free to give us a call anytime, 1-800-420-1980. And check out the IG pages at Cannabis Talk 101. Blue is at the one Christopher writes. Hello. Teddy is at r.dude.teddy. And you can find me at Joe Grande 52. And I got to remind you guys about the Bear Flag Group. It's your white label part. They're known to be on time, accurate, and do quality co packaging. They've been launching brands in California since 2015 at the Bear Flag Group. They do what they say they're going to do. Go check them out online at bearflaggroup.com. Today on the show, we got a man behind the entity that is responsible for shaking up the game, you guys, and doing his thing for the status quo of botanical oil reinfinement industry. Joining us at the table is Ace Shelander. With the beautiful hair over there, Ace, by the way. I like nice. that. I mean, I mean, you might as well call him Zoolander over there. Founder <laughs> yeah, and CEO Zoolander. of Beaker and Wrench. Beaker and Wrench is the company, an oil refinement solution company on a mission to build smooth, high-yield, maximum quality cannabis oil produced processes and systems that ensures you get the highest quality, top volume yield to which you're striving for. Beaker and Wrench doesn't just sell the machines. They actually provide white glove services, including delivery, installation, setup, and in-person training for you and your staff to get the best possible results. If you're ready and you know what you're doing when it comes to the, the getting the film all wiped off and evaporation, then they're going to help you out. Then you also know that this system is the best on the market. I'm looking at the video on the website and looking at everything there. I can't wait to see what he has on the show set for us. Their machines fit on most trucks with lifted gates and can be delivered anywhere as soon as possible. You don't believe me? Check out the website, beakerandwrench.com, B-E-A-K-E-R-A-N-D-W-R-E-N-C-H.com, and get involved in what they're doing or follow them on Instagram at Beaker and Wrench to get more information. Without further ado, give it up for my man Ace in the building. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, no doubt. Problem. Teddy's uh, ready to go check out your stuff. Real quick, before we even start, Connor, can you pull up the website and that video that I showed, told you that was just phenomenal? Look at this blue real quick and, and describe what is going on here, Ace, because this right here is just so awesome video as you so, show the different components. I'm sure this is the mothership of what you guys have. I'm, I don't know if it is or not, but I was this looking. This is our six-inch system. It's our actually our smaller system. We have a bigger one than this. Really? It'll distill. The big one will do a barrel of CBD a day. Wow. This one will do a bucket every shift. Wow. So I mean, and look at the way it works, yeah, though, yeah. Blue. The, 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 whoever animated this video did a great job because I geeked out watching it like three times yesterday. Nice. Like from beginning to end going, what is it doing? How is it doing? You bring in these molecules and you just did. I love this. It really describes visually what your machine does because I think as, as I was looking at it going, that's hard to describe with just simple words and this and that. You can, mm -hmm. but you can really see what the machine does and what it's producing. So Ace, tell us a little bit about this company and how you created it. And I mean, for you to be the CEO and founder of this is, is phenomenal. So we specialize in essentially vacuum distillation, particularly wipe films, but all the accessories that go along with it, the pumps, the temperature controls, because every part of that process is really sensitive and it matters. And we were founded back in 2016 when my co-founder Lily Bell showed me the first white film I ever saw. Um, I'd never seen one. And she, sh she was working in first locally licensed lab in California. And it was a little tiny two inch system, right? And it had a valve where a pump should have been. And I'm like, hey, th like you got to fix this. Like, it, it, it's. Are you an engineer? How did you know that? Why did yeah, you? Yeah, know I'm a mechanical engineer. I was working in product design in San Francisco at the time. Like, basically, if someone was making a Kickstarter and they made a bunch of, we called it vaporware, where they make a video and they have no idea what they're how to actually make it. They just have this idea, right. and then they would hire the company that I was working for at the time to like actually make it. make the thing. Yeah. And and make it a producible item that worked. And then. 
Uh, so Lily Bell shows me the swipe film. I'm like, hey, you should have a pump there. And so I convinced the company to commission me to make that pump. And nothing on the market worked. So I had to custom design from scratch a peristaltic dosing pump and delivered it six weeks later and it tripled the output of that machine. Wow. And wow. so we made a business selling those pumps, triple the output of this machine, triple the output of that machine. And years down the line, we were like, hey, we should be making complete systems, selling, selling an add-on. We should have the whole kit ready to go because we know these machines, we know how to make them, we know what features people need to get them working. And these machines were originally sold from like laboratory scale units from petrochemical equipment companies, right? They didn't know what cannabis needed, but right. we did. So that's what we did. We made a setup that worked better than any other machine on the market. And then we just kept improving it and improving it and improving it. And now you see like what was on that video. That's our gen three system wow. where it's, it's everything that we could want in a white film of that scale. Now what, explain what a white film is and explain what the machine does to everybody that's listening at home because we, we kind of get it, but break it down over the airway for someone. So white film is a distillation technology. And distillation is the separation of substances by evaporation and condensation. So I have a cool little demo over here, but the white film is just a very fancy version of it. We're, we're removing every other molecule that could interfere with that process. We're taking a lot of control on the temperature and wiping it into a thin film, which is why it's also called thin film distillation, so that you're getting essentially every molecule you can to distill and every molecule that you don't want to oh. not distill. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so you can actually, <clears throat> it, it helps you pass testing for pesticides, everything, right? Or in some, some scenarios? Uh, pesticides, it depends on the pesticide because... Well, that would be re-mitigation, re right? Or something like mitigation. that? Mitigation. There's lots of different ways you could do it, but distillation, it has to be a different boiling point. Gotcha. And you can manipulate that in all sorts of ways, but if it's the same sort of weight molecule, if it's the same sort of stickiness to the molecules around it, it will co-distill. Gotcha. So some pesticides distill all, every time. Other pesticides don't distill at all. Heavy metals don't distill. Most of those like mycotoxins and stuff don't distill. Right. So you can get rid of a lot of different things by distillation. And we've been seeing purities... Oh, all, I should mention all the cannabinoids distill together, right? They're all the same molecular weight. They're as far as distillation is concerned, they're very much the same. Gotcha. So we can get 99% cannabinoids. Wow. Now, if you have 10% CBD, it's 90% THC remaining, but sure. you can get 99 plus percent cannabinoids out of a distillation process. Wow. And Ace, on the website, it says the world's most innovative distilla distillation solutions. I mean, is your machine doing more than all the other machines out there? What, what does this mean? So it's the same technology as every other white film, right? But we add features like our, our dosing pump, right? That we have the best pumps that you can get. Then we have the baffled rotor, which is a patent pending thing that essentially purifies the vapor as it flows through the system. And like, I can go and nerd out about like theoretical plates and stuff, but it essentially distills it twice in one pass. Right. And why is that? Nerd out a little bit. I, I love, I lo we love when people nerd out about it because it's like, Wow, okay, that's what they mean more so. Um, should we jump into the demo? Please, let's I, I, I think this would give a, a good foundation. Perfect, let's go. What is this? Okay, so this is my Bill Nye the Science Guy style distillation system. So this is our new short path head. It, it's basically a condenser, right? You have a boiling cloth down here that's evaporating your stuff, and you're getting your product, your cannabinoids out here and condensing. This is just a part of a system. But I, hopefully you can see the uh, similarity between this and this sort of setup right sure, here. Sure, yeah. So if you imagine, this is a hot plate. Yeah. Hot heat is molecular motion. So if I shake it with a subwoofer for here, that's molecular motion. These are, these are my molecules. Sure. Where we have uh, like BBs, steel things that we don't want in our process, right? You don't want that. And you, you want this gold cannabinoid stuff. Right. So if we load it into our process, and then we start adding some heat, and the heat is basically some base that you're about to turn on. Yes, exactly. So I just have to like turn up the heat on my hot plate. You can see those molecules start to vibrate. Right. And if I vibrate them harder, some of them start having enough energy to distill. That's literally analogous to they're evaporating 
They're floating up to the top of the system and then they're condensing on this wall and then flowing out and collecting in my little beaker. Nice. And, and that's you, what your machine is doing. This is exactly what our machine is doing. It's a different shape. That is a that's great exactly demonstration, dude. And then white films are just a different shape. It's the same process of evaporation, but now it's going sideways. Wow. So you, you actually made this just for us, to, uh, not just for us, but for a demonstration. Exactly. And you can see now we have pure gold stuff. Right. And then I can add even more heat. It's a bit crazy, right? And now we've started getting some impurities over, right? Gotcha. So different substances have different boiling points and you can control how fast your process runs, what purity you're getting by that temperature control. That so if you don't control. turn it up too high, it won't, it won't, it'll be nice and clean. The less you turn it up, the, the better. Exactly. That's amazing. But you have to get enough energy to, to drive it over. Yeah. That's how did you guys sweet. figure that out? Like, what do you, where, where do you know? And then how do you make these plates? And like, it's called just trial and error. And just, I mean. Well, distillation has been around for thousands of years. So in, in some ways, we're not doing anything new. But in a lot of ways, like, it's all in the details of the process. It's all in getting that temperature control right. It's all in getting the vacuum. Because in a white film system, we're going for no other molecules present. Because you don't want any impedance if, if there's, like, air above this, right? that would prevent the oil molecules from jumping up and getting to your condensing surface. So we get to a level of vacuum that's about 10 times what the ISS flies through. Yeah. What's ISS? The International Space Station. Okay. Like our vacuum, like the vacuum system's like half the cost of the machine. Like the cold trap and the diffusion pump and the like mechanical pump, getting it down to literally one one millionth of an atmosphere. Wow. And that's what you guys are doing in this whole process. Right. It, it was, we have a bigger vacuum system. We have more stirring. We have better temperature control. We have pumps to move these. Like, I think you know exactly how viscous this stuff can be. Yeah. Like, try pumping that with an ordinary pump. Yeah, so, it's like, not easy. We have special pumps for that. Everything, everything is jacketed and heated and temperature controlled. Wow. And how big are these things, the whole units that you guys have? I mean, are people just buying a piece or you buy the whole thing from you guys? Well, it, it depends on your volume, right? So we have like a short path add-on where like your entire setup's not much bigger than this table, right? It's all on the table, it's all tabletop, and you can make a couple liters in a day. Wow. Or you can do the six inch, that video you watch, that'll produce two, three, four liters per hour. And that is seven feet tall, seven feet wide. Right. You can park it in a, an ordinary room. Yeah, it'll fit in here. But it, it's not tabletop anymore. Right. And then we have a 12 inch system which is actually seven feet tall, seven feet wide. We tetris it real tight so you can still put it in an ordinary room unlike any other 12 inch on the market, but it produces a barrel a day, like a bucket every hour. Wow. Look at that, look at that blue. It's right there, that's how big it is. That is amazing. And then you just pour, like how does it work? Walk us through the process. So you have the, the feed tank on the right. That's just like your crude oil. You already have to have extracted it. You already have to have winterized it. Gotcha. And our, our specialty is purifying it. Gotcha. And you introduce it to the system, this high vacuum environment, and it wipes it, you can see it on the video, into a thin film on the inside of that cylinder. And that cylinder is heated, just like the subwoofer in the demo, right? It's adding energy to those molecules. And then those molecules with the, the lighter ones evaporate first. And they have enough energy to come off that surface pass through the baffled rotor, that's our proprietary patent pending technology, and then condense on the internal condenser and flow straight out the bottom as your purified distillate. Wow. That's Is it idea. making different, better distillate? I mean, because people can get distillate in different types of machines, yes. right? Why this machine? Higher purity, higher throughput, ease of use, reliability. Like that, that's what we're really, we're all about is, is, the, is the customer experience, the usability of the machine. How frequently does it need maintenance? How easy is that maintenance? How, like what feature, like you can service the system without literally using a crane, right? Some of these systems, especially the 12 inch, you need a crane to take the rotor out. Wow. Ours has a hydraulic jack, right? It, it, it's those details. Yeah, that, it's, that a huge, make it's a huge difference. It's serviceable that make it more profitable to run the machine. You don't need all these other bullshit things to like clean your system, You're like boom, electric thing, drop it down, pull it out, right. clean it up. And, and there's a clean in place wheels. protocol, right? Like you can essentially run a distillation with cleaning solutions and now your system's clean and ready to run the next batch. 
Do you have to clean this after each batch, or can you keep running a few batches and then at the end of the day, what's the protocol? It, it depends on your. It depends on their protocol, right? Some people don't clean it for a month. Right. Some people clean it every single day, and it really comes down to like what stand, like what is their process for like, are they do they want to clean every system after every batch, and how big is their batch? Because if you if you clean it after every batch and your batch is two thousand pounds, you're going to be running for a while, and that's fine. That's great. Because these are designed to be run for hundreds of hours at a time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. How much is the cleaning cost? Like, if you were to do it every day versus, like, you know, once or twice a week? Like, the, the cleaning solution is probably, I don't know, $20 all in for, like, the special stuff and then the ethanol rinse that you do afterward. It, it consumes yeah, $20 to do a good cleaning. And, and an hour. That's really the thing. It, it, like, it takes Oh, an that's hour key right there. To, One hour to clean it up? Right. Oh, Which is a lot of downtime if you're trying to do a high production 24 hours a day, yeah, right. if you're trying to rock out, you know. But, I mean, at the end of the day or at the week, whatever, my point is it's just one hour. I, I would, looking at this big old machine, I was thinking in my head two and a half hours is the point to what I was thinking. You know what I mean? My well, head was just thinking well, it's if I'm not mis- that, that machine cleans itself, right? More or less, yeah. yeah. That's the clean and play solution. Put and then if you want to take it, it br- oh. you know, you're just letting it go through the and system. you're actually pretty on point. If for two and a half hours, you can take the whole thing down like inspect the wipers, replace the wipers, put it all back together. It takes me about two and a half hours to do that job. Well, guys, it's Cannabis Talk. When we come back, I want to ask the big question. How much is How it? How much is That's it? That's the big question. We'll be right, right back after this break. <laughs> <laughs> Cannabis has been proven to greatly ease the suffering of pain without the side effects of addiction and death. In fact, from research from the National Institute of Health, it shows that we can reduce, we can replace opioids with cannabis 64% of the time when we need medication for pain. And oftentimes the side effects are much, much better. They're not addiction to death, they're dry mouth, constipation, and maybe feeling a little groggy the next day. Now, what if we could apply that 64% number to the statistics I gave you earlier? What if we could have 64% less addiction? What if we could have 64% less death? That's thousands and thousands of lives that we get to recoup every month. These are our brothers, our sisters, our community members. It's not just their lives. It's their gifts, their talents, and their love. Chalmers Wellness is a full-service rehabilitation and recovery facility. Plus, he's the doctor to some of the folks around here, you guys. He's their personal one. They work with patients to identify, treat, and manage a wide variety of issues, including weight loss or gain, digestive problems, chronic fatigue. Blue, I think you need to go see him. Some pain, some injuries. <laughs> sciatic diseases, chiropractic problems, fibromyalgia, carpal tunnel syndrome, and plantar fasciitis. Medical doctors regularly refer patients to Dr. Chalmers when traditional medications and medicines aren't working for them and their patients. So for more information, check out the website, chalmerswellness.com, or call them direct, 214-446-5300, and let them know that Cannabis Talk 101 sent you an ace Sheelander, founder and CEO of Beaker and Wrench. As we look at the site and looked at everything, we first showed you the six inch, which is funnier that you call it the six inch and the 12 inch. Why that when they're, you know, six feet and 12 feet and 14 feet? What is the symbolization before we get into this big cost? That's about the, the diameter of the evaporator body. It probably would be better to call them like a one quarter square meter and a 1.1 square meter because the evaporative area is what matters. But the industry's settled on the diameter of the body is sort of the classification by which you sort of measure the size of the unit. Wow. And now, like Blue asked and said, what we're going to get to because you guys have all these parts and you created all these parts like you guys literally just, okay, we're making this, we're making that. Piecing them all together. That's basically what we did. We started with just the dosing pump, and then we added PID controllers and made a complete system where we're like using sort of found parts, right? We're like using someone else's body and using someone else's frame and adding the PID controller. And then we're like, okay, now we need a better outlet pump. We need a discharge pump because this is a continuous process. If you have to stop and break vacuum to remove a flask and pour it out, that's time wasted. Yeah. So we added the pumps. And they were like, okay, well, now we need to design our own body because 
lead times and prices are crazy. And so we did that and now we have a stainless body and now everything can be on one frame. So yeah. And then it's on wheels. And <laughs> exactly. So it's yeah, we, we just stepped through it. Every piece of the process, we just upgraded it and upgraded it and upgraded it until it is where it is today. Is I it done? It'll never be done. It'll, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like the, the Gen 3 is done. The Gen yeah, 3 is never. very nicely polished, but in a couple of years, we're going to need Gen 4. Yeah. Like put the computer control on the 6 inch, right? 12 inch already has computer control, but 6 inch needs it next. Well, you know, I, I look at this and, I, and I've seen a lot of like different extraction, you know, machines and different stuff. I mean, this thing looks really high tech. And again, the way the, the video is in, in full motion and even the way you articulate what's going on, I mean, you guys got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of moving parts. Right? And they make it user friendly to understand. Like I don't know about this thing. I know you but know you more about yeah, it. But, but now I can like, really oh, yeah. understand how it works just yeah. by watching your video and looking at it. Like I said, I watched it three times. So I can really understand. I've heard it. We've been to places, and you know, and I know Blue knows it a lot better than I do for, for facts. But I'm looking at it going, ah, that's what it's doing. That is so interesting. And so cool that you guys are creating proprietary information on even your motor on the inside and this and that to give you the most highest quality distillate. And, and then I see you guys make isolate too. Is it cool? Or does this need to be in a, Does this need to be in a volatile room? Uh, ideally, no. No. Because it, it's not hazardous location rated. All the solvent should already be recovered by the time it goes by to for, white it gets, film distillation. Right. Our newest product is actually a solvent recovery system. So it's not extraction yet, it's not isolation yet, but solvent recovery is another distillation process, but we're distilling ethanol right. or pentane or whatever your solvent is instead of the cannabis oil. Right. And it's the same process where you're evaporating the lighter molecule and recondensing it somewhere else, but now your product is in the residue and you're evaporating 10 times more solvent than you ever were oil. So it's a very, very energy intensive process. Solvent recovery is the most energy intensive part of the process where people are getting industrial buildings and putting fully half, like maxing out their entire building's electrical capacity just to drive heat into the process. Wow. And so our innovation is actually to use a heat pump, like your air conditioning system, literally. Oh, wow. To reduce that electricity consumption by one to one fifth. It's not by one fifth, it's like by four fifths. Wow, because you're adding the air through it, the heat, the hot air through it. and the, Because and the, we're recycling the heat. Ah, gotcha. Heat energy is heat energy. Like these beads bouncing around, like they fall to the bottom because there's friction in the system. But on a molecular scale, friction is heat. The, the energy isn't lost. So if you have a, a compressor, right, you can take that low-grade heat, that all that energy from that you have to remove to condense it, instead of blowing it out the window, literally, which is what most systems do, we take that, we improve the quality, we make it hotter again, and we pump it back into the system. Wow. And that's how you get the magic of using 20% the electricity to, to, to like 100 gallons an hour. Does the machine get so hot that you can't stand by it? Uh, it depends. Like the white film gets really hot. Like we're distilling at like 180 if you're really pushing it 200 Celsius, right? If you're blasting through it. The solvent recovery, it's only as hot as your heater in your home can produce. It's like 60 Celsius. It's warm. It'll feel hot touching it, but it's not going to burn you. Yeah. It's so hot, you know, it's but hot, if it's, but it's, it's not yeah. like, ah, it's not going to. So the big question, Ace, beaker and wrench, I want the big one. This is only for people that are really doing a company and producing a lot. You got to have a business to want to do this. This isn't your mom and pop. The big no, one. No, not just a business, like, like, who needs a liter of cannabis oil? That's like yeah. several years supply, right? Yeah. And these producing machines are producing that multiple per hour, depending on what scale. Right. So big companies are coming at you guys. That's who your target audience is. Absolutely. And so what's a ticket like this for the big one and the little one? So I'll start with the little one, right? The six inch, that's 185 thereabouts, thousand dollars. And then the big one is 465,000. So go, let's run up, on, let's, let's run back at, at the, so the website, so this one right here. Yeah, which, that's the big one. That's, that's about 465,000? Yes. And then what, what that will produce about how much? That produces 20 to 30 liters of distillate every hour. I mean, you're making your money back yeah, pretty yeah. fast, right? In I a mean, couple hours. No? I mean, literally. Yeah. Literally, you're making your money back on something And like then this. obviously you guys have like, you know, um, you know, on, you know, 
support, right? There's support if something goes wrong, building it, uh, you know, in installation, does that all come with it or is that an additional Mike part? Loves no, everything included. Yeah. So like, yeah, you could buy some extra spare parts, but sure. everything you need to run that machine and all the training to do it and a full year of like warranty support, call me, me or my engineer or the other engineer on the phone anytime. Yeah. Well, during business hours. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, it's two yeah, in the morning. Yeah. We're going hard <laughs> over here. Yeah, they're like, damn, bro. Get down here. You're like, where are you? <laughs> but but like, people like need to run these machines. Oh, yeah. It, it, mean, so they can make that money back, right? It's I'm a big sure investment. they buy multiple they, they, ones, right? Some people do, yeah. yeah absolutely. They just buy one. They want to buy five of them. Really? I mean, depending on the company? it depends on what company it is or to how many locations they have. If they're, you know, MSOs, multi. True. I mean, like I know. Each state, I, right? I mean, you know, I mean, some Good of point. the guys we deal with have multi state operators and they're. You know, they probably need, you know, several of these. I, I, I would imagine, you know, I mean, some of these big companies. Makes sense. I, I could yeah. name off four or five companies that probably could use one right now. Right? Yeah. How, sure. Who are you guys? Is there any big companies that we know that's using this for their products that you, can you share? Uh, I didn't ask anyone's permission ahead of time, so. Okay. Um, a lot of them are white labelers. Yeah. So it is very likely that you've vaped product out of one of these machines and like all the brands that you ever know might be using one yeah yeah i would imagine that because this system just looks so simple and easy and it doesn't seem as big as some of the other ones that i've seen at trade shows like i feel like i go to the trade <laughs> shows and i see something that's just so massive so big industrial they got the big old yeah thing, <laughs> that, that one's you got to get on a crane <laughs> to get the top of that and it comes down here on a, it just doesn't seem so well thought out as yours well, yeah, we really tried to package it and make it easy to use. Like that, that is why I developed these systems. It's not because the white film is new, that's 70 years old. It's because yeah. these features, that compactness, that usability, that reliability is, that's new. Were you into this as, as uh, in the Bay Area when you were working out there, like into cannabis and into geeking out on engineering products for cannabis? Or did it just come to you when you, like how did that even come to you to be like, dude, let's just fully get into this? Well, that, that was all my co-founder, Lily Bell, right? Like, she was in the industry. She showed me the first white film I ever saw. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what a white film was, but I knew what distillation was. I understood all the thermodynamics of it. I could do the math. Right. I could design the pumps. But you never realized that you could use that for cannabis at any point. You weren't like, oh, I bet I could figure this out. Well, I, I, I solve problems, right? If the, it, like, I have to have enough detail about the problem to, to solve it. Like, I didn't know that white film systems had a valve that should have been a pump. Like, yeah. she showed me that. She, she, she showed you the valve and you're like, that needs to be a pump. Right. And you knew it right away. Right. Right, because you could identify with the, the solution because the problem that's your, within yeah, it. that's his way of, of you know, Speaking and yeah, understanding that. as an engineer, which I think that's what I feel like I'm seeing here. I feel like I see the process that's so it clearly broke understand, down. broke exactly. I feel like you make it <laughs> so much sense to me that I've never seen it this simple. You know, and it's like, uh, I think it's beneficial for companies to really go check this out. Beaker and Ranch, if you're a company that's looking to get into the industry. I mean, this is even one of those, like, you can get into the industry because it's this simple. You don't need to know so much. You know what I mean? You can just have the financial backing and be like, dude, we can do this. You guys finance them as well for some of these companies? Oh, uh, we do. We have financing yeah. partners and we sometimes offer in-house financing too. Yeah, depending on who they are. Yeah. Oh, awesome. We're going to take a break, come back, uh, see what's coming up next for them, and do the high five with Ace. It's Beaker and Wrench right here on Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this break. Let's go. loves you. We do. 
I don't know if you guys seen the latest edition of the Cannabis Talk magazine, but we've got some great articles, very cool stories in it. Get yourself a hard copy today at your local dispensary or smoke shop near you. And the second edition is out right now, folks. So if you haven't seen it, go to the website, CannabisTalkMagazine.com, and subscribe now. Ace Sheelander, the founder and CEO of Beaker and Wrench. I tell you, it's, it's phenomenal what you guys are doing with this. I mean... Even on your Instagram, just showing all the things and the information that you guys are providing for people out there with the updates and seeing what you guys uh, are doing at trade shows and everything else. I love the colors with this purple and black and just it feels classy. And is this the team here at Beaker and Wrench right here that I'm on on Instagram? Is this the team right yeah, there? Yeah, that's all of us. Wow, and is that the, the where, where are you guys located at? We're in commerce, basically Los Angeles. Down the street? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah, we just drove here. Nice. Dude, yeah, that's awesome. I How know great that. is that? That's you would dope. never know by looking at the logo, like, what is Beaker and Wrench? You know what I mean? Like, well, it's a fusion of engineering and chemistry. Yeah. A Beaker and a Wrench. Okay. My co-founder, a chemist, and, and me, an engineer. That, oh, wow. that's, that, that's what we built it from the ground up. How did you that. guys come up with that name? How, how did you guys pull that out? I was inspired by uh, actually a YouTube channel called Applied Science, and I'm like, oh, that's, it, it, they have a logo of a beaker in a wrench, right? It's a different logo, but I was like, oh my gosh, that, that's what we do. That's, as soon as I said it out loud, I'm like, it has to be that. Nice. There's a logo of a beaker in a wrench. Beaker in a wrench, in and a then wrench. we make a beaker in a wrench instead of a wrench in a beaker. Right. Ah, nice. Ah, now they see the two yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I I love it, dude. I, and not only do I love it, I just love the process and how smart you guys are by making it so simple for guys like me who have no clue about what's going on. So this is now easy for anybody worldwide to pretty much get this product, and because now that the whole country's, the whole world is getting into cannabis like this, and whether it's so, I legal. will warn anyone trying to get into cannabis that this is one part of the process. Like sure. we do distillation, we do the purification, we now have solvent recovery, we now have deep carb, but that's like three parts out of five to 10 steps that you have to do to go from plant to product. Cause you oh. can make the process as complicated as you want. We just make the machines that we specialize in as simple as possible. And yeah, I can train anyone to use this machine in one day. Really? Anyone. That's fantastic. Because but this like, is I only just explained one part. it, right? This like, is only one part of it, though. This it is one the, part. This isn't the whole... You can't just take it and drop the... You, you have to bring crude to your store. Right? Yeah, you, I mean, you got to bring the crude in. So you bring and it then, in, right. Yeah. And but some a lot people of people do, buy crude. That's what, I mean, you know, they're not producing the crude. And, and I understand that, but you probably don't understand I didn't, that. Yeah, I didn't yeah, understand that concept. Either. But I mean, uh, you know, basically it's... That's that, that yeah, black oil, right? The crude is... Yeah, the crude oil. Yeah, and they'll take that and then you just load yours up with the crude. And it's right? called crude because it's exactly what you imagine. It's black, it's sticky, yeah. <laughs> gooey, smelly tar stuff. Yeah. Because a lot of it's not the highest quality product, right? It's like everything that didn't make it onto the top shelf of the dispensary. Yeah. And then we're turning that into a high value product because we can purify it right up to 99%. Right. And that's crazy. Now it doesn't have any smells. Now, like all the toxins are gone, all the tars are gone. It's a clear, pure product, and it doesn't really matter what the feedstock was originally. It just comes out as gold. Yeah. yeah. So on these things, when you put a big, uh, a big bucket, and you'll put a whole bucket in there, right? The black the crude. crude, and then how quick is it coming out? Uh, it takes a couple minutes for it to like start up, but like literally. You get everything all warmed up. It takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get everything hot and all the vacuum set up and you, all your parameters set. And then you press the go button. Wow. And like five minutes later, it's just like, it starts pouring out. It's just out. peeing. It's peeing the whole time. That's so That's awesome, amazing, right? Dude. Yeah. That's and you're just good. watching money pour into a cup. It's just, ma it's magical every time because you're like, you're pouring in this black, sticky tar substance. Right. And then just a couple minutes later, just this pure gold comes out. Wow. That's wow. amazing that you guys can do this process and do all the machines that did it. What is next for your company, Ace? Um, we're really trying to build up that solvent recovery. The, the whole heat pump distillation is going to be a really big deal in the cannabis industry and outside the cannabis industry because it saves so much electricity that there's lots of processes that that's needed for. So we just came out with the first system. We're on like serial number three and... So we're getting that out there and we made a big system, right? It's doing right. hundred gallons an hour and not everyone's at that size. So we need to make a smaller system. We probably need to make an even bigger system for other industries. Um, 
So yeah, we're, we're really pushing the limits of what distillation can do. When you say other industries, what are you referring to? Uh, fuels, uh, ethanol, uh, like spirits, yeah, you, you name it. If it, if it boils at less than water and more than atmosphere, like you're good. Like we can extract it. We can extract that, exactly. Yeah. Are they thinking about being able to do that with mushrooms? Oh, it's already happening. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on some right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I drank a whole shot of it. Uh, I'm totally kidding. Yeah. Because I could just see that coming. I haven't seen it yet. I've heard stuff, and but yeah. like being able to vape them and just being able to drink it. And are you guys looking oh, to do coming. a machine? It's, it's coming. coming. It's coming. It's coming. It, it sure. remains to be seen what the ideal process is because it's a different chemical. It's in present in a different concentration. So like you might eat a gram of mushrooms or a gram of uh, edible, right? But the amount of psilocybin's literally one one thousand the same as the amount of THC that you're consuming. So how you package that, how you refine it is still much like, different. It's not necessarily difficult, but it's different. Different. Yeah. It's going to be easy to do, but it's just a different process because it can be a much more concentrated from the molecule size to the. So it's harder. To, is it, does that cannabinoid, mean? The cannabinoids a lot more uh, denser than the. It's. So the, the psilocybin is much more potent. Gotcha. So the dose is much thinking. smaller. And right. it's also uh, water soluble. The cannabinoids are oil. Oh, wow. So you can't dissolve them into a tea. Like mushrooms, you can extract into a tea. Easy. Done. Yeah. So would you, what would you put in the barrel? Like you use crude in the barrel, right, to create what you guys are making here. What would you put in the barrel from the mushroom? Is it a full mushroom? Is it something that they process first? Well, you can put a mushroom tea in if you want to like evaporate all the water, right? That would be a solvent recovery process right. to concentrate it down and your solvent was just water. That's a viable option that people are doing. Um, and there's a million others that there's are still others. being discovered. Yeah. What are, do you think we're going to discover more ways to do this with cannabis besides using that crude oil? Well, there already is. There's dozens tons of, of ways. Like, how do you get to that crude? Is it butane? Is it CO2? Is yeah. it ethanol? Is it pentane? Is it methanol? Like, the, the list goes on. But you could Hot just... air is an option. Like, people have done that with air. Really? And you could, you can, you, and you could uh, take them and, and refine them all, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, once it's in a sort of oil form, that's... It's, it's done. Now you can start enriching it via distillation. But the, the number of ways to get that crude is infinite and to refine it further right like cbd crystallizes right so you can refine that via crystallization which is actually you get a higher purity like it's a much slower process THCA, like a thca crystallizes you can yeah. purify it with that can you but you can't do that with your machine no our no. machine doesn't do crystallization it, not yet. it's very commonly <laughs> it's like a step as a pre-step for crystallization specifically for cbd right because when you have a higher purity it crystallizes faster so you bring the purity up to 80, 90, 90 something percent, and then it crystallizes much faster. Wow. And does we're that make it stronger? Give him his own show. Dude, I show. Yeah. <laughs> I, and that's why I say, when you geek out like this, dude, it gets me like, Joe. whoa, He's I love this. And, and, and you're just so knowledgeable about this. As you say that about the tea, uh, CBD and bringing that higher like that, does that make the CBD stronger? Like the potency from the mushrooms are getting that 90% of the THC? Well, yeah, you're definitely concentrating the chemical, right? Like the crude's usually like a 50 or 60% cannabinoids, right? And then there's a bunch of other, like who knows what, um, terpenes, tars. Yeah. So when you bring it up to 99, and now it's twice as powerful per unit dose. Uh, and then the CBD is really cool because you can just watch it crystallize in the jar. It just turns into a solid. Wow. From the oil? From the oil, yeah. And it, like it just a, like no matter how much is in there, does it break up in little pieces or like a it, it solid takes, gummy style, whatever? Well, like CBN, that crystallizes like right in the bucket. You can just watch it. It's, it's, like there's a liquid layer on top and a solid on bottom. And then CBD takes uh, usually like two to 12 so, hours so are, are to you, crystallize. Are you like still using lights. that afterwards then? Well, that becomes isolate. Right, so you're using it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So once it's isolated, it's like 99 point whatever percent. And right. isolate, isolation usually uses another solvent to wash away what doesn't crystallize. So just because it's solid doesn't mean it's isolate. Right. That, that's a whole nother crystallization process that you have to get someone else's equipment for. Yeah. But, but you take that and move it to someone else's. Yeah. Get the CBN out of it. 
And what are they using that for? Like, what, what would they put in there? Uh, well, that's like what, how most CBD is sold as isolate. So if, it's, uh, if there's like CBD in your drink or in your shampoo or whatever, that company bought isolate. Right. And they like emulsified it with whatever their proprietary technology is. But they bought isolate from probably one of our customers. Right. And that's just, how many steps do you, um, do you have to go through to go through the whole process? Oh, I wish I had that like graphic in front of me, but there, there's an extraction process where what, you- What, is it on your Instagram? Uh, or no? Well, I think we're gonna, we'll repost it right now just for you guys. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, on your website, I got your website right here too. Is it on the website? Instagram. It's on Instagram. Oh, on Instagram? Just scroll down to Instagram. Okay. Well, uh, bring it up on the, uh, the IG. Anyway, the first part of the process is you introduce it to a solvent, right. whether that's ethanol or butane. It's something that the molecule that you want, THC, right. dissolves into. Then you separate the plant matter, the, the, all the mushroom or the plant that you don't want, and you just strain it out. Strain it through. Usually with like a centrifuge, but any number of other processes work. And then you have to boil off that solvent. You have to recover the solvent so you can reuse the solvent. And now you have a concentrate. That's your crude oil. Because the solvent usually dissolves other stuff. Gotcha. And then you go to distillation. Now you fraction off the terpenes, which are usually lighter than the cannabinoids, and then the tars, which are heavier. And you do that in two separate keep steps. Going through it, yeah. Right. And now you have a 90-something percent pure isolate. distillate. Oh, distillate. Distillate. Okay. And then that goes to isolation where you're dissolving it in another solvent and letting it crystallize. Wow. And that crystallization process gets it up to like 99.9 something percent. That's amazing. I That's just cool. love how people figure this stuff out because I mean, that alone right there is what the other companies are giving us the medicine in, oh, right? Yeah. Because they're putting it in the waters, the this, the that, and everything else. And is this it right here? Is this the process you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, there's your extraction, which is like, we illustrated the centrifuge because most of our customers use centrifuges, but it's by no means has to be a centrifuge. Right. Oh, and I actually forgot uh, uh, decarboxylation, but this is solvent recovery, where we're taking, we're, we're distilling the solvent back out of the system so to concentrate what we dissolved. Gotcha. And that's our solvent recovery system. And then we go to decarboxylation, um, which is only required for can cannabis because the THCA and the CBDA evolve CO2. And that reaction takes place at a temperature below the distillation temperature. So like I said earlier, like we're at one one millionth of an atmosphere. So all that CO2 coming off interferes with the distillation process. So we cause that reaction to happen on purpose first, then we introduce it and we pull off all the CO2 in a stirred reactor, and then we introduce it into the white film for distillation. Wow. Ace, do your parents trip out when you talk about this? Or they, they <laughs> <hear God>? <laughs> just <laughs> us? <laughs> yeah, because I'm sitting here going, can you imagine going, hey, son, what do you do for a living? <laughs> and then they're like, what the hell did you just say? Unless they're scientists and, you know, biologists. Well, my dad was an engineer, so. Oh, like, okay, like so I, he can geek out and uh, get understand. Yeah, totally. he, he gets it with you. Mm -hmm. He helped you. He yeah, helped and you actually, out. my mom's an artist. She taught me a lot of, like, the metalworking that, like, I use every day. Oh, really? Totally. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I love it. Yeah. I, I love your knowledge about it. It makes sense to me. You, you talk in a way that's just cool. And, and your visuals that you guys are using on your website are great. On the IG is great, folks. If you want to see them and follow them, make sure you do. And go check them out and support a company like this. BeakerandWrench.com is the website. Beaker and Wrench on Instagram. Ace, is there anything else that you want to talk about before we let you go? No, it's been amazing being here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, man, thank you for breaking it down and geeking out with us, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Make sure you check them out, guys. It's Cannabis Talk 101, and remember this. If no one else loves you, we, we do. do. That was great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's take some pictures. That's dope, dude.